Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. I'm on my way up to the super secret Crownland campsite uh, for the Lost Fisherman Survival Challenge, which, as I said in my previous video, essentially all I'm allowed to bring is my fishing rod and whatever I can bring inside of a 10 liter dry bag. I don't know if you can tell, but it is a little late in the day. I did have to work a full work day, so I won't have too much daylight hours to work with. I think sunset sometime after nine still, so I'll have a couple hours. Setting up shelter won't be too crazy. I just gotta string up my plastic sheet between a couple trees. Essentially, on the list of things I wanna accomplish on this trip, I want to test out that crayfish trap that I managed to fit inside of my dry bag. Okay, well, I made it to the camp. Uh, Thank you. What time is it? 820. 820. 820? Uh, yeah, so I got maybe an hour of light left at most to get my shelter up. Fun times. I'm gonna do that. I drank a crap ton of water because by the time I got into camp I was absolutely thirsty and probably a little dehydrated. So you guys remember Chris? I have that video uh, of us uh, up Yeah, at we the were winter. just talking about when we cut that big tree down. You could hear it crash in the video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, not as many of, uh, of us here as I thought. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have a seventh person coming, Martin. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so originally I think the turnout was supposed to be something like, what'd you say it was originally, like 10? Uh, up to 12? Up to 12. A lot of maybes. Yeah, so we're, we lost a few due to various commitments, uh, family, work, etc. Uh, even I, uh, I would have liked to have taken today off and actually come up uh, in the morning, but so much stuff going on at work, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't even try to ask for the day off without getting some flack. So, uh, Chris, who I just had on camera there, uh, had this set up last time they were here, which I think was last year. Uh, so there's still remnants of that. You can see the uh, the headboard log on the bed of ferns and leaves that he made and then one of the, the borders I don't know what you want to call it what I, th what I think I might do is actually set up in the same spot so I brought that uh, plastic drop sheet to use as my shelter so what I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna string it up from this tree to this tree little guy and do a kind of wall facing the water uh, and uh, open facing up into the bush there. I have less than an hour of light left, so I better get my started on that. Okay, so this is going to be home for the night. Uh, like I said, uh, my buddy Chris was here last time, pretty sure last year, uh, judging by how dry the uh, old bed is. But essentially, uh, I'm gonna set up right here. Uh, I'm gonna tie my Dollarama plastic drop sheet special to this tree here and this tree here. I have a, a wall on this side and an open roof uh, coming towards you at the camera there. All right, let's uh, let's get this set up and uh, hopefully not poke any holes in this drop sheet. I got duct tape to repair it if I need to, but. Uh, you know, I've only got a limited supply in my little survival tin there, so I'd prefer not to waste it if I don't have to. Right there. Just gonna drape that gently on the floor for now. See, I'm gonna be ground sleeping, so I don't wanna hang this too high. So like I said, I always wanna tie tech into my adventures from now on. So even though I'm out in the bush doing some, for me, relatively hardcore bushcrafting, you know, I still have 3D printed stuff with me, right? Like this spool holder is 3D printed. I got some 3D printed fishing tackle that I handed out to everyone. It'll be cool to get them testing it out. See if it's worthwhile. All right, so. Uh, about here, I think. Does that look high enough to you? All right, got that nice and taut. Uh, drape this across. Like so. I uh, should have a light or something so I can melt the end of this, but I don't have a light on me right now. Okay. 
either we're going to make this bad boy as taut as we can get it. So we're going to tie you. Oh, hello, Ant. Yeah. here. Okay. Ridge line's done. I'm going to drape this over ever so gently. No window makers, we're good. It's the Dollarama ground sheet special. Only the finest accommodations in the next two minutes. And uh, I got some uh, some rocks or some wood or something to anchor down the wall side. And maybe I'll do that first so I can see how much play I have to work with. Anchor number one. Uh, pull this up more towards the tree. Uh, okay. One side. Oh, there's already a rock over here for the other side too. How convenient. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, three anchor points. I'm gonna button off and tie out the front facing portion. Alright. Need pebbles. I've got two little pine cones. I'm going to use these to button off the corners of my uh, little shelter there and tie those off. And uh, <laughs> uh, I got this little stupid looking uh, first person rig so I can actually get some first person action going on on uh, stuff I'm filming. So this GoPro here is the same one that I filmed 90% of my channel content with uh, up until I got the DSLR, which is recording me now. The LR looks like from the GoPro right now. Hopefully that's not angled too far down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take some wine. This plastic drop sheet is not the strongest of materials to be making a shelter out of. So I think I'm going to tie this guy. i got to be careful because I think there's a tick hanging out on this branch right now. All right. Not the cleanest of tie-offs, but I'm looking for effectiveness here, not beauty. All right, so is that one done? And we're going to tie off this one. Okay, now where am I going to tie this off to? So, maybe, I'll tie this off over here. Lots of cordage, so I'm not too concerned. Okay, tie-offs are done. Okay, so this is uh, home. Yeah, so for the most part, uh, she is good to go. So that's, uh, that's what I'm calling home for the next two nights. I know, I was just, I can hear something creak in there. Alright, so I got this uh, crayfish trap. I'm gonna bait it up, toss a line on it, and throw it out in the water, leave it till the morning, and hopefully, got some crayfish in the morning. Alright, so since I don't actually have any fish guts of my own, so what I'm gonna do. Ah, right, I forgot I had beef jerky. One for me, one for the crayfish. So for bait, beef jerky. Again, not the cleanest tie off ever, uh, ever but at least there is a tie down in there. Chris and I had some intense moments. We're <laughs> just like we're running out of stuff to throw on it. Yeah. Well, you're lucky. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna toss this thing in right over here, I think. Bait's in there. All right, wrap this around my arm so it doesn't go flying out. Toss attempt number one. Okay, so I, I don't know if you could see that in frame, but I tossed my crayfish trap in there. And I'll leave that overnight and check it in the morning. All I have in there for bait is a single piece of beef jerky. 
but hopefully A, there's crayfish in there, and B, that's enough to entice them. You enjoying yourself in there, guys? I shouldn't have peed while I was swimming in here. He's filtering his water. <laughs> oh, Mike's recording. Should we do synchronized swimming? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If I sleep in here, the bugs can't get me. <laughs> <laughs> They're so bad already. If you want to bail out of your shelter, stay out of mine. <laughs> I'll go back to the van of Diet Coke in there. If you have to in the night, come bail it. Come get it, mine. No, I'm fine. So this is our little watering hole. This is where we're going to get water for drinking and cooking. Oh. And that's where these gentlemen decided to go swim. <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, don't actually pee in there. Hey. I like the grape one. <sighs> well, good morning. Uh, slept through the night. Slept is a strong word. Open sky. You can see the fire burning right beside me. So, last night was an adventure and frustration. Uh, I had a, it wasn't even an ember, it was like an actual chunk of coal. Flew off the fire, landed on my sleeping bag. Yeah, so, giant chunk of coal burned right through my sleeping bag. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But burned right through to my pants. And burned my leg the tiniest bit. So not only did I ruin a brand new sleeping bag, <laughs> but I ruined a brand new pair of pants. And also slightly burned myself. What are you gonna do, right? It happens. Okay, let's check this crayfish trap I set last night, see if it caught anything. I'm not holding my hopes up. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing in there. That's unfortunate. Oh, let's try fishing for a bit. Nice bass. There's a nice eating size. So I'm going to switch things up a little with this thing. I'm going to take the bobber off. I'm going to re-thread my bait so that it'll actually move in the water. So see how I have that set up? Hopefully that actually moves in the water. I'm going to reel that in a little bit. And pinch my line off. Flip that. Get whatever weird that is out of my line. There we go. They don't seem to be going after my stupid Montoy bait. You see how I got that hanging off the end there? I'm trying to see if that'll. Yep. Yummy, yummy lake water. It's a hard spot to get water from, eh? Yeah. <sighs> yummy, yummy lake water. <sighs> okay, so it's about quarter to ten. Uh, had a little cat nap, had some breakfast, coffee. Nothing too much happened around the camp. I think I'm gonna join my uh, buddies here and start casting the line back out in the water. Uh, see if I can catch a fish of my very own. Here's another idea for you. These are called a wacky rig. The hook could also be going perpendicular to the body and it just kind of rolls sideways and flounders in the water. Looks like a wounded fish. These are pretty popular too. Here's what I got in my tackle box. 
chartreuse has been going good for us. Both, I think Chris and I both had luck with it. This is about the closest you got to, oh no, there's some, these green guys down here. That would be chartreuse. Like most of the fish we've caught this weekend were on those. Bigger than that, but that color at least. Get that on the GoPro here. Those are some beefy bass. So, can't wait. It's headed to the bottom right now. So yep. It's got a weight on it. So you give it a little tug, reel it in. Give it a little tug, reel it in. This gets it moving, and then it pauses for a second to give the fish a second to strike it. That's I'm keeping my tip up high in the air. I'm trying to keep that lure away from the bottom of the lake. And then as you get close to these weeds, you want to be close down here as you can. You've got a long rod. So before you get into those weeds, you want to come up and out and stay out of these. Honestly, all the strikes I was getting last night within the two feet in front of these weeds. Well, it's, uh, it's about noon. I haven't accomplished too much today. I slept like absolute arse last night, so I've been trying to catch a few Z's during the day today. Especially because it's so hot. I got long sleeve uh, pants and shirt on. I don't want to do anything and overheat myself. I'm already trying to stay on top of my water here. Oh, but I uh, just went to the bathroom and my pee is pretty yellow. So I forced myself to drink more water. Isn't that the most delicious looking water in the world? I'm trying to finish this. Stay hydrated. Uh, no luck fishing yet this morning. Nothing in the crayfish traps. But uh, Tell was saying that maybe beef jerky wasn't the best bait idea. So next time uh, one of the guys uh, fillets a fish, I'm gonna toss some of the guts in the crayfish trap and see if that works. Because there should be plenty of crayfish around here. Seems like there's lots of rocks in the lake. That's where I'm at. Just being a lazy bum. Try not to overheat. Get sunstroke or heat stroke. Or dehydration. It's not too, too bad. But that's because I'm intentionally avoiding uh, getting to that point. I really need to get myself a kayak. Getting the tiniest bit of overcast with the clouds, so that's fantastic. Well, so much for that shelter. It uh, snapped off of the uh, corner tie. You can see the, the buttoned off corner there. Uh, and it is now currently wrapped around those trees. The, even the rocks I had sitting on it couldn't hold down the wall. It is very windy up on this ridge. So clearly this is not the best of uh, shelters. This one's a wash. Well, it wasn't exactly a successful day of fishing, but at least I managed to get one on the line. That's a success in my books. It's better than I did. It's better than what I did, I broke the rod. Yeah, yeah so I managed to actually snag a fish on the line. Uh, and he was running around, but I lost him in the reeds. It's a step up from what I've done in the past. Activity over where I set up my uh, crayfish trap. So I'm gonna check it, see if anything's in and around it. Looks like a bunch of hot nothing. 
So I got the remains of big old Mr. Big Mouth Bass there in there. So hopefully now I'll actually catch some damn crayfish. Okay, so we're closing in on the end of the second day. Got some bass frying up in the pan there with some fish crisp. Flowery hands, never mind. That pile of meat. It's all bass fillets. So it seems to be coming out of there. I didn't look out and catch any. But there's always next time. You just get ripped in. Ah, uh, can't see it for the tree, but there's a beaver right on the other side. Uh, there he is. You can sort of see him coming through the brush there. There he is. You see him? Beaver. Well, second night's coming to a close. Mosquitoes are out in full force, so I got my head net on. Uh, shelter had to be torn down earlier, so I'm sleeping open sky again tonight. Not supposed to rain, but in the event it does. There's a little wooden shelter behind me that I can take refuge under. I got the remains of my plastic sheet. I can uh, drape up and over it to waterproof it. So I'm not too concerned. I was hoping it's not cold tonight like it was last night. So I was hard going trying to sleep uh, without uh, a proper ground pad and insulation from the ground. So do you guys have any final thoughts on our uh, little lost fisherman survival challenge? No, well, I, I think we could do it with the, you know, half of our usual. I think if you, I think, I think if you kept your bag to a 30 pound minimum, you'd probably be okay. Yeah. Maximum. Maximum. I mean, Maximum. The There's only, not the a pound thing, over. The only thing I would have been bringing besides the uh, the rucksack itself would be a, a decent sleeping bag. That would be it. And a sleep roll. Yeah. Like a pad. Yeah. Uh, basically, I'd, you know, That's what I've got here wouldn't change. I'd just have a little more food with me and I'd have to probably so. Yeah, that, that'd be a, that'd be about it. I know, I know, I learned a few things um, on this trip. I've never ever, if I it doesn't matter what chap is, I'll always help start the trail with a full bottle of water. It, it, like yeah. I'm not carrying no water ever again. Yeah, uh, no, I that's think that's I can right. agree with that. That's why I was like, you know, I've got this was water rough bottle going. around my neck. It's, I, I need it on the trail. Yeah. And don't, don't uh, eat kind of just before you start it. Yeah. So make sure you've eaten a couple of meals of the day. Yeah. Ugh. Another thing is, is on um, my, my fishing loader, I'm quite impressed with it. Um, I want more experience, but I brought too many knives. Could you have made knives? <laughs> yeah. Got, uh, yeah, I was, I was that tool heavy. Yeah, because I brought my multi-tool. I brought a Swiss Army knife that fit in my pot. Then I had, I was able to fit my bush knife in there that I should always carry. And my Scrama. And I got, really, I should have just brought the bush knife and Scrama. I think yeah, I, got the, I got the multi-tool. I got the my multi open L. I got a Swiss Army knife that I just grabbed off the shelf as I was heading out the door for... I don't know why, you know. I got the neck knife here, which I used once, and that was to pin down the the, the, the skin fish. on the fish, so it would stop sliding away from me as I was cutting. <laughs> but that was. Oh yeah, know. I have a neck knife too, and then my saw. So I brought this army knife because I brought a saw. So because I didn't, or I, I wasn't gonna bring the saw. So if I were to do it again, I would just either bring this Swiss army knife and that's it, or probably just bring this Swiss army knife. Well, that, I could have done this whole weekend with my belt knife. Yeah. Or I've got less. three yeah. cutting utensils on me. I've got my bush knife, my multi-tool, and in my little survival tin, I've got a segment of a uh, 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 exacto blade. Well, it is the morning of the third day. Successfully spent two nights out here with not even a shelter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pack up my stuff, have a coffee and some food for the hike out, and call it a day. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're new to the channel, I like to combine fun futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences, so check out my other videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. Hit the like button if you like this video. Leave any jokes and comments down below. And I'll catch you guys next video.